What is up, YouTube? Fallen Psycho A2 of Team Tsunami here, coming at you with the Bujin deck profile I used to play Galo or Bea's Cliffort deck in the video that just went up on um, Team Shockwave's channel. Link to that video will be in the description if you want to see a duel versus a good player playing Cliffords. Anyways, this is basically the deck I used in that tournament and the deck I've been using for a while. It works pretty well. People have said it's really unorthodox, but it works <clears throat> so let's get to the deck profile um three motto um as weird as you can make a deck you need three of this guy just because opening him is so good just instant setup plays plus if you have kaiser you win so these are 100 percent necessary uh tuning kazuchi a lot of people have gone to one with him. I still like him at two, just because these two can generate a lot of advantage together. Um, if you open Yamato plus Turtle, you can add Mikazuchi and pitch Turtle, and you instantly basically get a hair effect from hand, where if they destroy him, you still have a monster on board, a Beast Warrior, and you get Turtle protection. So he's really good in a lot of ways. Um... To her roommate, I almost want to bump her up to three. She's really solid, just due to the fact that she can just bring herself down from hand, and you have instant combo plays. She actually makes Bujins have the ability to OTK, as ridiculous as that sounds. I think I did that a couple times. Uh, one Arsuda, extra Beast Warrior, um, might become a third Harume, I don't know. He combos really nicely with Harume, just because she can special herself, and he can special himself, and that's a Sasanuo, without using your normal summon. So that's really good. He also can just, like, sit on board. I don't know. I normally only used him to make combo plays with Harume. And those are your Beast Warrior Bujins. You play eight of those in this build, at least. Uh, Bujingi is three crane works well i would not play less there's games where i need all three there's games where i don't use any but i definitely think three is the right number uh two hair destruction protection i never pitch this first turn unless there's a matchup that really calls for it usually um i think after playing that matchup i think hair might be the right call to go first turn versus clips if you're playing um ba you want to pitch turtle first Shadals, I'm not quite clear right now. I think it kind of depends on first or second. First, you might want to pitch hair. Second, you might want to pitch turtle. Um, but, yeah. These are basically Yamato's helmet. They, you strap them on, and then he can't get hurt. And then the spikes for your helmet, the Quillen. Um, Quillen just deals with threats. He deals with scout among other things, he's really your only way of dealing with opponents' things without exceeding or um, going with Bal. So he's really important in the Cliff-Off matchup, especially if they have vanities, just because Sacrifice says Crane doesn't do anything versus me. So Quillen's really important in that matchup. And those are the eight Bujingis. There's 16 Bujins in total. Then one Honest, also known as Draw You Every Game Then Win. Um... <laughs> Yeah, honest. 17 monsters, and that's the whole monster count. 3 tanky, searches Yamato, um, searches really any combo piece later on, and yet yeah, just definitely a necessary 3 of. 2 carnation, comeback card, gain advantage. Some people have said 3, I think 3 clogs, and you only need 2, because 1, you can search it. 2, if you're in a position where you need maximum chance of top decking it, you're playing Bujins wrong. Uh, two Kaiser. This plus Yamato just says, Haha, fuck you, you can't play Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, yeah. Two Duality. Set up. You don't need to combo off in this deck, so this is really good to just set up. So, two's the right number, though, because three is cloggy. You don't want to as much late game. Yeah. Two Lance, make sure you can summon your Bujins. That's really important. It also can help win battles, which is strong. And then one Foolish. Just speeds up the deck a lot. A lot of people say it's redundant since Yamato and Sasanoa give you so much search power. It's actually really good. If you can get Hair plus Turtle into the grave first turn and have a Yamato on board, like, you're set. So Foolish just helps set that up really quickly. 
uh, yeah, there's your spell count. You play 12 spells. Um, yeah. Trash cards. Three Phoenix Ring Wind Blast. This card is so good in this deck. I'll go into some of the cool stuff you can do with it later, but it is so good. Like, it, I honestly think this is one of the main reasons Bujins are good right now, because of the utility they get with this card. Um, like, BAs use this card really well, because they don't lose advantage from it, and it's a really strong card. Bujins are good because they stalk themselves, because it actually makes them better, in a lot of ways, being able to get stuff out of their hand. Uh, two emptiness. I wish I had three. I do not own three, so I play two. Um, I probably wouldn't have played three at that tournament anyways, but this card is really good. Just the ability to stop special summons chain to a Shadal fusion, and yeah. Two breakthrough, negate effects. This got side out against Cliffos, obviously. Mm, yeah. But overall, it's really good. Can negate Winda uh, and go off. Uh, two garbage that I never want to see get cited out every single game. Um, this is literally in here because normally I play against bad people and it trolls them. So I throw this into the deck and just laugh when they run into it. But against actual good people, this card's garbage and I never want to see it. So I cite it out every single game except the Noble Knight matchup. I kept it in there. But still, this card's bad. Do not play this card. <laughs> it, it, I forgot it was in there when I went to that tournament. Uh, one Compulse. Deal with threats of all sorts. This got side out versus Cliff Offs 2. And one Warning. Warning is really good right now. Just because of everything it can do. And yeah, you played 11 Traps. Um, On to the extra deck we'll go to. We play two Sasanoo. Three is unnecessary. It clogs up space in your extract that you could be using for other things. I think two is the absolute optimal number for this. I've never felt the need to make three ever. Uh, one Kagetsuchi. Uh, I've walled up under him a couple times in that can women games. Just dump a lot of stuff into graveyard helps. Beat stick. And yeah. And Tiger King. Basically a second Sasanoo while you're comboing. Searches Tenki, which searches Harume or another Beast Warrior, and just, yeah, combos off. Can also negate effects and help you deal with Leo. So, yeah. Because you can only control one Sasano, so Tiger King acts as a second one when you're trying to make combo plays. And those are basically, like, the Bujin-specific monsters, I guess. Yeah. On to other extra deck cards. Two Castle. Castle is actually really good. Mo a lot of the... Okay, here's the funny thing. You can actually make him with a uh, Bujin Carnation, because he's a winged beast. And that just deals with a threat instantly. Um, you can, yeah. So he does a lot of cool stuff for this deck, just due to that. Also, he's just a really good card due to the utility he gives you. You can bounce back threats like Floodgates, threats like monsters like Construct, deal with Shadal monsters without giving them fusion back. And he also has a Mace Shark effect, which is kind of cool. I never actually used that, but he has it. Uh, 1 101. S suck up threats. Exiton. Punish bad people. I'm sorry, if you are still losing to Exiton and think this card should be banned, I don't mean to be super offensive, but you should not be playing Yu Gi Oh! You should not be losing to Exiton. Exiton's mainly there to, uh, so that you know he's there. That's why you play him, so that you know he, so that he is a threat. And if your opponent messes up, boom. Exiton. Uh, one Paladynamo. Never made him. Actually, I think I made him once, and he gave me a draw, which helped. Yes, I made him against Galo, I think, and that helped me draw. I'm not certain, though. He's good. I, he won me a game. Diamond Dyer. Diamond Dyer is good. Um, I wouldn't play him in most decks right now, but he can just pop, like... He can target any of your Bujins, which is really cool. Like, uh, target Sasanoo, chain hair from Grave. That's pretty cool. And then your opponent loses a monster for basically nothing. Uh, Cowboy. Pew Pew, burn damage. 
uh, Dweller, no graveyard effects, I don't know, Black Ship, I, I don't know why I play this card, to be quite honest, um, Rhapsody and Berserk, just deal with graveyard threats, and one best card ever, number 82, Heartland Draco, I love this card, it's so fun to use. Um, onto the side deck. To effect Veiler. I mainly side this guy in and against decks where I'll need to negate something first turn. Or if I side into the Decree build of Bujins, I still want to effect negation and I can't really break through his Nas effective in that matchup, so I'll switch those out for these if I side into Decree. Um, 3 MST. Deal with Floodgates, also deal with Pendulums. This side deck was not well equipped to deal with Pendulums because I hadn't updated it since Pendulums were released. And yeah, so but MST did help with that. MST was mainly in there to deal with Floodgates. Two Noble Mayo Crossout, deal with Shadals. Bad people playing Yang Zings. Idiot still playing Gearsia. Uh, mind Control. This card's actually really funny just because of all of application it has. You can steal your opponent's Shadal monsters to push around them. Also, if you steal a Shadal monster, you can trigger its effect for you. Or if, like, you know they have a Hedgehog and you really don't want them getting fusion, I've taken a Hedgehog before and just flipped the Hedgehog, then gave it back to them. So that's actually really useful in that aspect. Uh, three, Decree. Really heavy trap decks, Burning Abyss, etc. This card helps. You can't use traps, I side in Veiler for negation, and we're set. So, yeah. There is the Decree build of Bujins. I did not feel that was optimal right now, but I could side into it if necessary. Two of this card. This card is mainly in here for rogue decks. I was siding, and I'm just like, oh, hey, look at this card. I can side this in and stop Pendulums. Yay. And then it won. It, this card won. That, that's what happened. So, yeah. And the last two cards, Shadow Mirrors. Negate Shadows. This card's really mediocre against Burning Abyss, simply because they can discard a BA with Phoenix Wing or Regeki. Target this card. This card goes back, or gets destroyed, or whatever, and then as a separate chain, their monster will trigger and grave. So this card's really suboptimal in that matchup. But, it, yeah. That's the side deck. And the choices surrounding them. Now I'll go into a bit of theory such as the Cliff Off matchup. A lot of people have said, like, whoa, how do you play the Cliff Off matchup with Bujins? Uh, the way you play the Cliff Off matchup is this card. You are not going to win your battles. That is a fact. You will not be playing for advantage in Bujins. Because the main way Bujins share an advantage is a slow game where they stock up their graveyard without losing advantage and the graveyard helps them generate advantage while they win battles with Crane. That's the Bujin advantage game. That does not work in the Cliff Off matchup because you cannot win battles. It is very difficult to deal with the Cliff Off monster because they have Sacrifice. Sacrifice is a very strong card in this matchup simply because it basically makes Crane a minus one. So it's really strong. But the reason Crane is still good, you have to play that matchup for damage. They pay a lot of life points. Every time they activate Scout, that's a tenth of their life points gone. So if you can deal a lot of damage fast with Crane, you can usually just make a small push for win. And that's basically how you play the club off matchup. Yeah, it's kind of bizarre. Um, other fun things to do. So, say you have a Yamato on field. Um, and say you have a Phoenix Wing set. So, your field looks something like this. And in your hand, you have hair. And you pitched Turtle to Grave that turn with Yamato's effect. Uh, your opponent does not know you. Your opponent thinks you're like, okay, there's nothing he can do to stop a destruction effect. So, they quickly use an effect that doesn't target Yamato. Say, Regeki or Dark Hole. And to try and deal with Yamato quickly without while dodging graveyard effects. What you can do is chain the Phoenix Wing, discard this, and target something of theirs. Then chain to Phoenix Wing, banish Turtle for cost. Because the discard is cost with Phoenix Wing, so Turtle can, Hair can actually chain to that since it's engraved now. And that's a really cool application with that. 
Um, what's also really cool is, say instead of Yamato, you have Mikazuchi. Discard any Bujin, and in your end phase, you get that for free. Well, not for you when Neg 1, but you stalked your graveyard, dealt with one of their threats, and gave yourself this. So that's it, really, really cool. This card makes Bujin so much better. And, yeah. That's basically the deck, guys. If you guys have any questions, message me or someone, I guess. Comment. Comment, like, subscribe. I don't know what else I'm supposed to do. Doug's in charge of that. Thinking is hard. Ugh, I just want to play Yu-Gi-Oh. So, yeah. Thanks for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. If you could drop a like, comment your thoughts, or subscribe. That would be great, actually. I appreciate it because it serves to stalk my ego. And my ego is very important to me. Thank you for watching. Fallen Psycho 82, signing.